Steve Asmussen is one of the most successful thoroughbred racehorse trainers of all time. Asmussen also has the most extensive record of rule and drug violations of all major trainers in U.S. horse racing. PETA conducted a four-month investigation of Steve Asmussen's operations at the famous Churchill Downs and Saratoga racetracks in order to expose what it takes to get to the top in horse racing and the price that the horses pay. On average, 24 horses per week die on racetracks in the U.S. During the course of the investigation, PETA's undercover agent documented standard practices in this industry in which death and injuries are business as usual. The horses were sore and injured all the time and constantly getting injections and treatments of all kinds. Fuck these horses. Motherfuckers, they'll fucking break your fucking heart every fucking day. These There's always something wrong with them. To train and race through all the injuries, exhaustion, and pain, horses are subjected to an endless cycle of performance enhancing medication and pain masking drugs. This regimen takes its toll on fragile young horses whose bones aren't fully developed. Place is hard on horses. Everybody has to learn this year. It's the hardest place in the world. Just see these limping motherfuckers. I see this son of a bitch out here dogging and everything. It's fucking horrible. Now you see that much fluid shooting out of it. Well, fuck, look at the fluid in there. Even Asmussen's prized horse, Nero, who finished second in the 2011 Kentucky Derby, was forced to continue training and racing on painful, chronically damaged feet. Animal Kingdom wins the Derby! Nero in second! Have Nero's feet always been this bad? Yes. They're horrible. That's all missing. His foot is a little bitty nub. It's all broke off. He lost, listen to me, he lost Z-bars Z on both feet multiple times yeah, until he had bloody holes in the bottom of his feet. Quit being such an asshole. And he's just he's got no foot. There's no wall. There's no wall. He doesn't even have a pulse in this one. He's barely got one in the stick your thumb in there. Right there in the front. Oh right there. Don't touch it again. Oh, oh he can't yeah. take a brush. No, it's been like that for three months. Right there. From putting a Z bar over the top of it and rotted. Put your thumb in that hole right there. I, listen, I know the fucker hurts. This yeah. hurts. Let me show you this hole. This is checky. We tried super glue in that hole. Super glue. That's the stupidest thing I've ever done. Just a few days later, on Kentucky Derby Day 2013, Nero died after a severe bout with colic at Churchill Downs. I have seen a lot of shit. That is the most violent fucking death I've ever seen. We almost died just trying to get that motherfucker down. He retired the horse a year ago. He retired him from racing last year. Yeah, that's what he was doing. He was After that, he was retired. By them days, for the money. From birth to death, most horses used for racing are treated like disposable commodities. You cannot believe how many they hurt and kill before they ever even get to the racetrack. It's, it's mind-boggling. While gamblers at the Kentucky Derby sip mint juleps, the horses are served a steady diet of drug cocktails. With all the medications the horses were being given, even in their feed, it felt more like working in pharmacy than a stable. One of Asmussen's drugs of choice was thyroxin. The drug was being given to every horse in Asmussen's barns, apparently without testing or evidence of any thyroid condition. This drug was recklessly administered, seemingly just to speed up metabolism, not for any therapeutic purpose. Viral level up. Similarly, Lasix, a controversial drug banned in Europe on race days, was injected into all of Asmussen's horses who were being raced or timed. PETA's investigator recorded New York's top horse racing veterinarian admit that the primary reason why Lasix is given to most of the horses is for performance enhancement. Do you think all the horses you work on Lasix here? Or do they come at that? Basically all run on it. It makes them light. it makes them lighter. I just know there's some that didn't need it. Probably, but it's a performance enhancer. Peta's investigator also documented an array of painful treatments performed on horses. Are those marks like from blisters? Right there, that's from freeze time. 
Shockwave therapy is like a dead, it kills pain. That's why you can't do it close to it. Because people used to do it like two or three days out and then they just mm -hmm. go out there and snap the fucking leg off. You have to have a special smile on it? No. Anybody can do it. Fucking retard can do it. It fucking hurts like hell. I can't believe that fucking son of bitches can take it. I would see betters in the stands reading statistics in the daily racing form, and I would think, they don't know how sore and injured these horses are and how many medications they're on. They're being duped. Here, Asmussen's chief assistant trainer, Scott Blasey, angry that his horse got scratched by stewards before a race, tells the investigator how he will fool the stewards next time. You know what? I'll fuck them next time. I'll put a gel cast on that motherfucker and I'll make it look as good as it fucking can. I ain't got no problem scratching the horse. Horse is a little fucking off. Trainers will do just about anything to gain an advantage, regardless of the consequences to the horses. Here, Scott Blasey jokes about how one of his leading jockeys, Ricardo Santana Jr., used a concealed shocking device on the horses. I tell him, wake up going in the morning. You got the marking now? <laughs> the investigator also recorded Hall of Fame jockey Gary Stevens and Hall of Fame trainer D. Wayne Lucas laughing about the use of these painful and dangerous shocking devices. So, <clears throat> long story short, I win the race and hit the finish line and I reach over the course and I I shot the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were still behind the gate at Rio del Sol, and it was just like it was a, a, a full-blown orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, had a, everybody had one. Although during nationally televised races, owners and trainers will wax on about how much they love their horses, here's what they say when they think the cameras aren't rolling. Here, Scott Blasey celebrates losing one of his poorly performing horses in a claiming race to a new owner. The horse, Valediction, later had to have emergency surgery, but Blasey was overjoyed that he had unloaded the horse. If they ask you how he is, say he's my favorite horse. I love it. Yeah. Then Blasey and the new trainer for Valediction, Rudy Rodriguez, joked about Valediction, saying that he was a rat, horse racing vernacular for a horse who doesn't win money. Can you take my horse? You'll do good with him, Rudy. I can't ride, man. Rudy, we traded a rat for a rat. We traded a rat for a rat. PETA's investigator also documented the terrible conditions for the exploited workers in Asmussen's barns. Many undocumented laborers were required to work long, hard hours for little pay. It was awful to see them getting exploited like this. Many couldn't even live in the staff dorms at the track because they were undocumented workers. They had to sleep in barns and hack rooms. Here, Asmussen is explaining how to manufacture paperwork illegally. <laughs> I presented it to him like this. It's real simple. If you guys want a job, you're not going to work for me under that name. They'll come in and fucking raise you. As far as they know, you don't exist anymore. So did you help them get the social security cards too and all that? So they can like $60, 70 a person. The horse racing industry tries to project the image of rolling, bluegrass hills, and family farms. But these are factory farms, where syringes are the most important tools of the trade. <laughs>